We begin with another day of heartbreaking news at an Ontario nursing home that's been devastated by an outbreak of COVID-19. Three more deaths have been reported this morning at the Pinecrest Nursing Home in Bob Cajun. In total, 12 residents have died. The wife of a resident also passed away. Certainly not used to, uh, to uh, having uh, so many deaths over a single weekend. Uh, um, I, I was in tears at times. The outbreak began with three residents initially testing positive for COVID-19 March 18th. Since then, more than 30 other residents have developed symptoms. 24 staff members have also tested positive. In a statement, the home's administration says residents have been isolated and staff with symptoms have been sent home. Joining me now is Dr. Marilee Fullerton, Ontario's Minister of Long-Term Care. Good morning. Glad you could be with us. Thank you, Marcia. So first of all, I want to get your reaction, your thoughts to this tragedy at Pinecrest. Well, it is a tragedy, and uh, my condolences and my heart goes out to everyone affected. Uh, family members, uh, residents, staff, everyone. How did this happen? Well, <laughs> we're looking at COVID-19. It's an unprecedented threat uh, worldwide and our most vulnerable people are in long-term care. And so we're looking at being pro proactive for many weeks now, making sure that we put up active screening, that we had um, really taken all measures that we understood to be effective for pandemic uh, planning like influenza. Uh, COVID-19 is a, is a new beast and our understanding of this is evolving. We were putting up what we were calling a steel fence or an iron wall around long-term care. Uh, clearly, uh, there are gaps. And so we're doing everything possible that we can uh, to address this. So whether it's through um, increased surveillance, increased screening, looking at ways we can redeploy staff uh, through our inspectors in long-term care out to our homes to make sure that the staff has the support, the supplies, and uh, everything that they need um, to manage this COVID-19 situation, it's unprecedented and evolving. So we're working with the Chief Medical Officer of Health uh, through Public Health Ontario. Uh, he gives us directives and we make sure that uh, our inspectors and, and uh, that these are, are communicated to the homes through public health and looking at how we can support our staff. The staff is absolutely dedicated uh, to residents. And as I've said before many times, our residents in long-term care are our most vulnerable population, and they need all the support that we can provide in terms of screening, testing, monitoring admissions, actively um, changing our emergency orders so that we can allow homes to address that, making sure that we have a management team right now in Bob Cajun at the home that is affected, and uh, they're bringing in PSW. So, so this is an evolving situation and uh, a tragedy. and. Uh, we're taking every measure possible. The Globe and Mail is reporting that at least 26 long-term care homes across the province of Ontario have at least one case of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. How does that kind of data get out there? Who is responsible for sharing that information? Because this, and, and I don't need to tell you this, I'm sure, is a nightmare for anyone who has a relative in a home right now and they don't have that information. So who's responsible for getting it out there? Yes, that information comes through public health and uh, it comes to the ministry after it goes through public health. But there are several layers uh, of processing to make sure that the information is accurate. And you know, we have a gap, a time gap, with nowadays with social media, everything can be put up very quickly and we have discovered that you know, information is getting posted to Facebook and other areas uh, about the situation in homes. And so there is a lag between we can uh, between the time where it's, it's put out in social media and that it, uh, it becomes official through public health and through our Ministry of Long-Term Care channels. What about the policy that only allows for three people to be tested at the beginning of any type of outbreak? Once three people have been tested positive, mm -hmm. there is no more mm -hmm. testing. Can you explain the rationale behind that? Yes, that was uh, that was through the um, evidence and medical uh, information that was available up until this time regarding uh, influenza and uh, other infection monitoring processes. So that is designed through uh, public health 
and uh, we take directives from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. And we're in constant contact with our homes. These procedures and protocols are, are really given serious scrutiny. Uh, the situation in Bob Cajun is something that, you know, we need to learn from. We've learned from SARS. We've learned from H1N1. And uh, we also have to understand where the gaps were and close those gaps. This is a, a day and night process ongoing constant discussion over what else we can do on this. Do you think that's a protocol that should be reviewed? I think we're always reviewing this. And the, the tragedy in Bob Cajun uh, really points to the need for greater scrutiny on this. And uh, we've done active screening. There are ways that we've been discussing with the Chief Medical Officer of Health um, that would allow us to do more. Uh, those are under discussion to make sure that, uh, that we take every measure possible and uh, that we continue to aggressively address COVID-19. This is a threat that has never been seen by the world before. And uh, we're committed to making sure that the gaps are closed. So there were, as I understand it, 65 residents at Pinecrest. Um, yes. 11 have died. Um, what is the protocol around keeping people who are deathly ill inside a home? Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that the Chief Medical Officer of Health and public health uh, actively working on to make sure that we address those issues. We take the science and the evidence from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Our government is absolutely committed, as I am as the Minister of Long-Term Care, to make sure that everything is on the table in terms of what we can do. In terms of testing, you've probably heard uh, there's a, a worldwide demand for the test kits. We're actively looking uh, for, for tests that may be more rapid. That would certainly assist but these directives will be done through the Chief Medical Officer of Health. And finally, what is your advice to people right now who are concerned about their parents and relatives who are in long-term mm -hmm. care, care facilities during the pandemic? Well, I can certainly understand having uh, my own family members in long-term care. It's absolutely um, constant that we are reviewing these. I want to assure family members that every measure is being taken, that in terms of really putting up that steel wall or the iron fence, uh, they are safe in the home, uh, in a long-term care home, more than they would be in a community setting where, you know, this invisible COVID-19 is out there. We are doing everything in our power, uh, everything that's possible to uh, provide the screening and that iron fence to prevent the COVID from getting into the home. And if it does get in, we are taking active measures through the Chief Medical Officer of Health Directives uh, to isolate and to prevent the spread to other, but you can see how, how um, virulent it is. This is a, a, a threat that we have not seen before. And final question, are there enough workers right now? We know from reporting that an entire shift um, mm -hmm. did yes. not show up at, at Pinecrest because they were yeah. afraid of the virus. Yeah. Do we have enough nurses and PSWs to be there um, yeah. at this time? That was an issue uh, even before a dedicated Ministry of Long-Term Care was formed back in the summer. It's something that we've been actively working on. And right now in Bob Cajun, Extend Care is in as a management team and it has PSWs uh, on the ground there. Uh, also the inspectors uh, through the Ministry of Long-Term Care 175 uh, have been redeployed to provide support, staffing and supplies uh, in Bob Cajun. Uh, and uh, looking at this um, process, to uh, help other homes that may be similarly uh, affected. Hopefully, the measures that we've learned from Bob Cajun, we can implement across the province. Uh, this is something that uh, is absolutely critical, the emergency orders. We've done two of those so far to make sure that our homes can be agile, agile and that we can make sure that our processes to respond are agile. In terms of the uh, staffing at Bob Cajun now, I understand that that is stable. But you can see that how rapidly this, this virus can spread and that we need to uh, be proactive, and we are being proactive on this. The issues and this, the specific circumstances in Bob Cajun need to be fully understood. And uh, the assurances from our government are that we will do everything possible to make sure that our frontline who our uh, staff are, are that are so dedicated and compassionate that they are supported, that they are kept safe, and that they can continue to provide care to our loved ones in long-term care who we need also to keep safe. So this is something that is ongoing. Uh, we are actively working day and night 
to make sure that we keep up with the threat that's posed by COVID-19. Dr. Fullerton, Ontario's Minister of Long-Term Care, really appreciate your time with us this morning. Hope to speak with you again.